In California, the ground squirrel is natural prey for the rattlesnake. So why in the world would this squirrel approach this rattler and get face to face with it? This is the, the typical display. They'll, they'll approach, get fairly close, and do this tail flag while they kind of inspect the snake. Rulon Clark is a professor of biology at San Diego State. He's a snake guy, and this summer he's in Northern California studying the way rattlesnakes and ground squirrels play the game of survival. This California ground squirrel rattlesnake thing is just such a, a great kind of almost epic story. But before we get too far into that epic, let's learn why squirrels wave their tails at snakes. Clark says a rattlesnake is like a gun with one bullet. When it strikes, it gives itself away and loses its coiled launching pad. And if it misses the prey, the prey gets away. It all has to do with the snakes relying completely on crypsis and ambush. If the animals around that area are on the lookout for snakes, the odds of a snake being successful, very low. So the squirrel flags its tail, even raising the temperature of its tail to send infrared signals to the rattlesnake. So the, the tail flag seems to be a way for the squirrels to say to the snake, I'm ready to jump away. You know, sometimes the squirrel doesn't even know the snake is there for sure, but it's still tail flagging. This body language seems to make the snake withhold its strike. But how do you create a reliable way to test the theory? Meet Robo Squirrel. This is what we hope the Robo Squirrel kind of looks like from the snake's perspective. The creation of a UC Davis engineer, Robo Squirrel, is a taxidermied squirrel with a mechanical tail that mimics the tail flagging movement. In this video, we see it meeting a rattlesnake. When Robo Squirrel flags his tail, the snake does not strike. But when it remains still, the snake strikes. To its great disappointment, I'm sure. Ah, just another Robo Squirrel. Now let's get back to that epic story Rulon Clark was talking about. The story is evolution, or to be specific, coevolution. Coevolution is just, it, it's evolution, but it's specifically evolution between two parties that are continually adapting to each other. You can have like mutualistic coevolution between, say, plants and their pollinators, where they, they benefit each other. Then you can have antagonistic coevolution also a very powerful force. Two parties that are at odds, like host parasite or pathogen, um, you know, human. Or ground squirrel rattlesnake, fighting the battle of predation over thousands of generations, making each other genetically stronger and more cunning. 